The mountainside resort of Davos is famous for its ice sports and skiing. And for one week a year, it's where the powerful gather for a powwow. The journey up to Davos is one of the few quiet moments I get to enjoy at the World Economic Forum. This year, a record number of participants are expected to attend, including 80 billionaires. You could say that for one week each year, Davos really can claim to be the richest place on the planet. And here's another number for you. The richest 1% own half of the world's wealth. According to research commissioned by the BBC, the world's wealthiest 85 people own as much money as the poorest 3.6 billion. That's why growth and income inequality are top of the agenda at this year's gathering. It's a crucial issue. I would call it even a centennial issue. But we have, in our risk report already five years ago, we have said that's the number one uh, risk uh, for the world. If this issue is not addressed, we will disintegrate societies. The question for many on the outside of this international gathering is how people at the very top of the wealth mountain can possibly help those at the bottom. To assist them, the World Economic Forum has reached out to those on the front lines of addressing economic hardship. Adam Lowy helped set up Move for Hunger in the United States. His trucks pick up unwanted food from those who are moving and deliver it to local food banks. There has to be a way that we can move businesses to do good while still doing well from a financial standpoint. I mean, it's, it's sustainable. It's the best way that you can operate a business. The World Economic Forum isn't claiming it can tackle these issues with just a few days of meetings. But as the forum gets underway, there is a real sense that businesses and politicians recognise that a more balanced world is in everybody's interest. Michelle Fleury, BBC News from Davos.